Welcome to day 32. Today, Jane and Paul and I are gonna cover off um, some mobility and restorative pieces for hip health with a bias um, on a lifestyle with a lot of sitting in it. So we'll each give you three mobility pieces that we've found really valuable for ourselves and for our clients. So the first piece that I'm gonna show you is a hip flexor opener. Um, what I like about it is really basic. So it's great if you have a hard time getting in that position. Um, but in no way is it too basic for anyone to do. So all you need is a surface that's the height of either a bench or a couch or a bed. And then you're going to set yourself up in a lunge. And what's great about this is that you can totally support yourself on the leg that's on the floor and then straighten out your back leg as much as you can, keeping your torso upright. And then you can totally control how much you lean into this stretch. And if you feel like you get some release, then you can just push a little bit deeper into it or just stay here. So the second stretch I'm gonna show you is for <laughs> opening up the lat and the hip in a nice long fascia line. So all you need is something that you can hook your hand onto. So using um, like the leg of a couch or something that's stable, a heavy chair works well. And I like to put my hand facing palm away from me, but you can do it either way. And then just Work your body a little bit away from whatever you're holding on to. And once you're in this position, it's really nice to drop your other leg across your body. So right now I'm dropping right leg across and I'm using my left foot just to pull across a little bit. And that just adds a bit more of a hip component as well. But opening up the lat and the hip is gonna help with low back and hip health. So if you want, you can switch hand positions, see which one works better for you. Um, and then you can play around with how much you open up your body or put your leg across your body. This one is probably my main go-to for hip health. Um, coming from yoga poses, I really like opening up the glutes and the hips this way. So sitting, you can go a straight leg if it's challenging to get your other leg underneath you and then cross this leg on top. Just make sure you keep both of your sit bones on the ground and then you can from here either just pull your knee towards your chest, see if you get enough stretch to the glute here. If that's not giving you quite enough, you can twist a little bit more. Um, if you're twisting, make sure that you get tall through your spine before you twist, so your low back should be relatively flat. And then just use your arm and your hand to pull your leg towards your chest. So that's part one. I usually spend a couple of minutes here. And then without changing your position too much, Stack your shins one on top of the other. And then your goal is to get your knee down towards your other foot. So for some people it might sit quite high and that's okay to start with. Don't do this if it adds a weird, bad twisting feeling to your knee. Um, if that's the case, you can go straight out. But if you can stack them better off, it's better mobility. Um, and then apply some pressure down onto your knee and lean away. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually applying some directional force on the skin, um, which will increase the stretching feeling that you get through the front here. So this is great if you're sitting a lot, if you're running a lot, um, it gets into some of those accessory hip flexors. And then from here, you can actually just move through different positions with your torso, and that's gonna change different fibers of the glutes and the deep rotators that you get into. So it's worth spending quite a bit of time here. Okay, so building off of Heather's work, we're gonna focus a little bit more on the hip flexors. Uh, we're gonna add some rotation into the mix. Start with both legs bent to 90 degrees, flatten your back into the floor, cross one leg over, let that drop to the side, letting your hip come up right here. Take your hand, stretch it out. Should be feeling a nice stretch right through here. Next one, start a nice high plank. You're gonna cross under with one foot, and then you're gonna drop down to the floor, leaving your hips on the floor. Walk your hands forward a little bit, push up into a little bit of extension, and then lift up through your hips should feel that right through here on the front. 
stretching out gently. You don't want to feel too much pressure through your low back while you're doing this. So really trying to elongate up and forward. Last one, we're going to isolate another part of your hip flexor a little bit more specifically. Go into a bit of a lunge. Hinge forward with your hips. Reach forward with your arms. And then rotate, feeling a nice stretch through your right front hip. So just building off of uh, Heather and Paul's um, movements, the first one I want to show is can be a bit of a, a dynamic stretch, but it can also be held as a static movement if you're feeling a nice release through it. So starting in a nice wide but stable stance, you don't want to feel any sort of pulling in the, the inner thigh at this point. Um, you're just going to take both hands and reach down towards uh, one foot and then bring them slowly across the body up into more of a diagonal plane. And you can go back down to the bottom and up and across. And where you should be feeling this is that when you're down at the bottom, you should be feeling a bit of a pulling in the inner thigh, a nice bit of a stretch in there. And then as you come through it, it should move back up into more of the hip flexor oblique. And you can do it. If you find that um, doing it two hands doesn't give you a ton of stability, you can sort of place one hand on the hip and just do it one-handed if you feel it this way as well. Okay, and you can do both sides. Um, the next one is similar. Uh, again, you're starting in a nice wide stance. You're going to go down into sort of a one-legged adductor stretch and then hands are going to be on the floor just to give you a bit of stability. You're going to go down, drop down, bending this knee until you feel a bit of a stretch and then you're just going to let your hips fall backwards. So you can kind of move through forward and backward movement and you'll feel the tissues that are being stretched differ slightly as you move through that. You don't really want to bounce back and forth. You want it to be a controlled movement. <clears throat> and then the add-on piece to this one is to take the straight leg, bring it across behind you. And again, you can change this hand placement if you need for stability. Little back and forth movements in this position as well. And then you're going to start to feel it in this hip versus uh, the other leg. So again, Starting in this position, you can do some back and forth movements just to sink in a little deeper into the stretch. And then taking the straight leg, crossing it behind you and dropping into that stretch. So the third stretch that we're going to do is really simple, just flat on your back with your knees bent. You wanna keep your feet flat on the floor and you're just gonna let your knees fall in and touch. And if you feel a little bit of a stretch through uh, your hips with this one, then stay here. If not, try and widen your placement a little bit. And again, keeping your feet flat on the ground, try and bring your knees in together. And you can just hold this one for as long as feels good. If you find that your um, one side is feels different than the other, one side doesn't want to give you as much movement, you might want to play around with dropping one side down while the other side kind of rests. And again, the key is sort of keeping your foot flat on the, the ground and just dropping the knee in towards. If you find that you're extremely uh, fluid in this movement, then you might want to put a foot over top and give yourself a bit of uh, assistance with gravity by using the other leg. But you wanna try and keep this hip flat on the ground. this.